Cash. Welcome, fellow online presenters and our guests. Please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active Toastmasters international member and have completed at least six Toastmasters official speeches, or ultimately, if you have substantial relevant presentation experience, you may apply for membership after demonstrating your ability in a two to three minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by the members of our club. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role if you have one. Right click and select rename to do so. We have members and guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that the meeting is being recorded and your video or audio contribution may be used for club marketing purposes. Also, please remain muted when you are not speaking. Please help me welcome. Remember that the one thing that's constant is change. He changed and took on the role of president again, though it wasn't a change since he was the actual original president of online presenters. He has, however, changed his background and introduced us to a different side. The Beatles fan, please help me welcome President David Carr. All right, thank you, Johnny. Yeah, so that's where you get the old saying, the more things change, the more we still can't get rid of David. But there were many people who have come into our club and they said that they loved our club, but it turned out to be Apparently, a brief infatuation because some of those people have fallen away over time. And so I talked a little bit last week about trying to study what makes an online club successful, an online only club successful, what might be different about that than keeping a traditional club successful. And I'm actually continuing to study that topic. I'm reaching out to other online club leaders, including some who currently have more members than we have. We used to be the biggest, but that was kind of the, during the um, area where we had that unfair advantage of COVID driving everybody online and people were coming here to figure out how to do it. Uh, now they think they've got it figured out. They don't, they, they still need to come to us to find out how to do it right. But, uh, but that's something that we need to work on. However, um, today I'm here as, as just an ordinary member uh, and we have somebody to lead us through this meeting. The wonderful Marianne Brady is in charge. Marianne, please take the meeting away. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm here to tell you that my heart is going pitter pat as we get ready for our Valentine's Day meeting. Now, for a lot of people, Valentine's Day is about romantic love, but really, I like to think about it like I mentioned, from my grandchildren to my parents when they were alive, my friends, I like thinking about it's a great time to express our love of anyone and anything. So tonight, I'm going to share a few Valentine facts. And like I said, my grandson gave me a card and it said, you have a pizza, my heart. Now, how cute is that? So think about the best and cutest ways you can express for your love for those around you. Because when I signed on to Online Presenters for the very first time, I was infatuated. But the more I stayed, I fell in love. So I hope you do too. And tonight, uh, we have um, two speakers tonight. Kurthika is one of them, who we all know. But we have a guest who is my friend, Vaidehi Chitnis. Now, Vaidehi's coming to us from Princeton, New Jersey. And she is practicing a contest speech, and we are going to ask Jim Barber to give her his full evaluation. But following that, we'd like to get a round robin. So she's got a lot of different opinions before she takes it to the next level. So I hope that you'll all join in and give a short eval after Jim's. And with that, I'm going to ask our role players to explain what they're doing for us tonight for the benefit of our guests. 
Our counter, uh, Teresa Savadago, can you tell us what you'll be doing for us tonight? Um, yes. <laughs> I wasn't prepared to, to talk about that. I'm sorry. Um, I will be checking everybody's ahs, ums, and filler words and keeping track of them. And at the end of the meeting, I will be reporting on that. Thank you kindly. Next up, Grammarian David Carr. Well, first of all, let me mention the word of the day is infatuation. An intense but sometimes short-lived uh, burst of uh, romantic uh, interest, admiration for somebody. Uh, as I say, not necessarily the kind that lasts, but fun while it does last. My job is to listen for any verbal footfalls that might occur during the meeting, give you feedback on things that you might approve, as well as recognize examples of excellence, if you have an opportunity to work the word of the day in somewhere along the way, then do so. Perfect. Thank you, David. Next up, we have our watcher, Angela Heath. Hello, everyone. Just know everything you do, I am watching you. And I will be reporting on you at the end of the meeting. Back over to you. Thank you, Angela. Now we have our chat monitor, Andy Byrne. How, how is everybody doing today? The role of the chat monitor is to monitor what's going on in the chat. Are people busy sending their comments while someone is speaking, being rude in that way? Or are they commenting about other things? Are they completely oblivious? That's what I'll be reporting on when called upon at the end of the meeting. Thank you kindly, Mr. Byrne. Now we are going to move right along. We do not have a tip of the day, as far as I know. So the next thing, we're going right into our speeches. So our first speaker is Krithika Devi Ven Venkan. Ah, you already got a tongue twister with that name, but uh, Venkataram, and I hope I got that right. Uh, she's going to be uh, delivering her speech. I have no information on it, so. Please take it away, Karthika. Thank you, Dr. Mario. Just give me a second. I'm just sharing my screen. I believe my screen is visible. Yes. Yeah. Sure. A warm good evening and a good day to the rest of them. Did you know spraying water droplets on you purifies yourself, glorifying the you in you? I'm definitely here not concerned about the scientific fact or notion. Instead, I am focusing on the belief system. I'm a great believer of God. There isn't second thought about it. I was the only child to my parents and a pampered kid sitting near the window watching the kaleidoscope the symmetrical patterns, the colorful, vibrant in it, reading comic books and hearing to the roaring sound of the waves near the Bay of Bengal was my pastime and the best hobby that I owned. My both of my parents were graduated. They moved out of their birthplace because of work nature. They were highly adaptable to new place and environment, though. It also inherited, it got inherited into me naturally. Alternatively, I wasn't comfortable with that, moving along with them to every new place because I had to leave back my friends. During the same time, my grandfather passed away, which was a great loss to me. I was the source of happiness to him, and he was the source of power to me. Here, I am a person of adaptability. Years were rolling up. There were a lot of pressure on me regarding my studies and focus. Instead, I was rolling down 
nudging on people whom I lost, starting from my grandfather to my friends. This emotional upheaval fitted my melancholy like a favorite woolen sweater. So this wasn't me. As a teenager, I was a charm and authentic person being able to influence anybody quite easily as a natural skill. Being obsessed towards technology, I picked up towards innovation and ideas and tried out a lot many new things, inculcating new skills and new opportunities. Also, I was a decent artist, a drawing artist, a zonal level shuttlecock player, and an athlete in my school level. I was a person of tantalizer who cannot be captured and a smart worker. Here, I am a person of admirability. Being a Germany person, there was an opposing pole of nature in me where I was concentrated, organized, a concentrated person, organized, possessing clarity in my thoughts and needs. This also was resembling more like the story of the blue marble, where the earth was looking like a blue marble when you see you out of the space. Correlating the uncorrelated, building hypothesis, scientific reasoning, all these were my discussion point and my hobbies. I was a magnet where I captured many prizes and got accolades in my school days. All these skills and the power in me, combined with the inertial power that was inbuilt in me, gave success. There was my father. My father was a quite normal person. He was one of the engineering graduates who encouraged me to do engineering. This gave me way to complete my master of engineering with flying colors. I was Anya University's first rank holder, competing with hundred plus engineering colleges out there during that time. My pictures were published in the newspaper. I was also promoted for the college codings. This was a time that I was in cloud nine. My entire family celebrated my accolades and I was celebrated like a celebrity. Soon, before, soon after my graduation, I started working with India's first university-based incubators, the Indian Institute of Technology Madras Research Park, as a technical salesperson. There was also a break time for me where I have to take time for myself rest up. This opportunity gave to look back what was happening wrong in my life. Being a poor communicator and having poor public speaking skills, I also have to sacrifice one of the best opportunity as being an assistant professor back with a PhD opportunity from Vellore Institute of Technology. Though having an offer in hand, I did not take up. Because I wasn't aware there was some club like Toastmasters even exist. I took another road, moved to different places. It was both business trip and personal trip. I don't know if it was rejuvenating or rewarding or even punishing, though I was in the road and I did not take the other road. The road that I have taken now has no way, even if I regret about it. After all these regrets, I'm still standing before you, giving my icebreaker as a woman of power, as a woman of potential, with the authenticity of their in me. Here I am before you as a Toastmaster. This is how I became a Toastmaster. Over to you, Toastmaster Girl. Well, thank you so much. And it has been a real pleasure to watch you progress on your journey because you are somebody who is just knocking it out of the park with all the roles you're taking and the way you participate. So very, very happy to have you as a member of our club. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of uh, Valentine's Day facts. Now there are approximately, or on the average, 220,000 wedding proposals on Valentine's Day each year. Now, another fact, Cupid is said to be the symbol of Valentine's Day, and Cupid is the son of Venus, who is the Roman god of love and beauty. 
Now, there's another one. At least 9 million people buy their pets a gift on Valentine's Day. How about you? Just thought I'd pop a few in there before I introduce you to my friend, Vaidehi Chitnis, and she is the president of Princeton Toastmasters. Her speech tonight is a contest speech named, the title is The Ugly Duckling. Now, she's given this speech at the club and area levels and has succeeded in one first place. But she's going to be on her way to the division contest next. And we're trying to get more feedback from our group today. So Jim's going to give an evaluation. And then Carolina will conduct a round robin, <clears throat> excuse me, evaluation. And we're doing this so by day he has some, we call them polishing points as she gets her speech ready for the contest. So take some notes and be ready to give her feedback when that time comes. Please welcome by day he Chitness with the Ugly Duckling. Mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? It could be you, or you, or even you. But it was certainly not me when I was a little girl growing up in Mumbai, India. Madam Toastmaster and fellow ducklings. I was born dark skin and had the plain looking in a country obsessed with the lighter skin population back then and thereby the quintessential ugly duckling. Quack! My sister was a fair and the lovely one. My mother compared me with her while my father yelled, put some more face powder on this girl. My sister could do no wrong and I could do nothing right. When my parents themselves were unable to see the good in me, what was I supposed to think? Have you all heard of the mean girls? They were in my school. They pass cruel comments about my skin color and looks. Did they ever pause to think of the impact of their words on my self-confidence and self-esteem? Words are powerful. Choose them carefully. Sadly, I let their words influence my thinking. I wound up much like Cinderella, just waiting for a fairy godmother to come and rescue her. I grew up to be an attractive and intelligent young woman who was at the top of the class in college and pursued by several boys. But in my mind, I was unattractive. So I assumed that they either felt sympathy for me or just needed help with homework. I kept everyone at arm's length. When I turned 22, my parents arranged for my marriage. The 24 year old prospective groom who came to see me was like a prince from a fairy tale. Handsome, intelligent, a thorough gentleman. When he asked my parents, for my hand in marriage, he said, you are like an old soul, sensible, balanced, beautiful. Wow, I hadn't even considered these qualities within me. <sighs> it was the day of our engagement. As I reached the venue, I noticed that most of his relatives were good-looking, fair, and fabulous. Some of them were whispering, Couldn't he find a fair girl suitable to him? Oh, God. First, I was compared to my sister, and now I would be compared to him for the rest of my life? Really? It took them a while to accept me within their fold. Post-marriage, thus began my hopeless attempt at a makeover. New hairstyle, new clothes, and a new attitude. All with the intent 
to prove to others that if he was the prince, I was also his princess. Looking back, I feel so foolish that I even thought that way. Why was I looking for external validation? One fine day, the ugly duckling turned into the beautiful swan. Over the years, I considered the weight some people give to good looks. I moved my attention away from focusing on my flaws and towards recognizing and strengthening my core good qualities while also overcoming my weaknesses. I discovered that patience and consistent effort are key to self-transformation. With the support that I received from my dear husband, my sister and my close friends, I realized that the love, the respect, the admiration that I was seeking was mine all along. My family and my friends loved me for who I was, not for how I looked. What an epiphany! Today, I'm a confident and capable woman, unafraid to take on life's challenges. I'm very careful about who I keep close and I love to spend time with positive people. It is equally important to protect ourselves from those who are demeaning and demoralizing. When the ugly duckling realized he had turned into the beautiful swan, he did not consider revisiting those who were mean to him. Likewise, look to the past only for lessons learned and keep moving forward. My fellow swans, I shall let you all in on a little secret. Think about how you can use your unique talents and abilities to love and accept yourself. If you can, help others become their absolute best. Fellow Toastmasters, let me remind you to focus on your strengths, to spend time with positive people, and to be patient with the process of self-transformation. For we all know that given the right opportunity, environment, and support, you, you, and even I can become the best versions of ourselves, the enigmatic and the magnificent swan. Madam Toastmaster. That was wonderful. Thank you for visiting us with that beautiful speech. Now remember everybody, save your notes for the evaluation portion. I'm gonna give you some more Valentine facts. Now, Richard Cadbury invented the first Valentine's Day candy box in the late 1800s. He's one of my favorite people in the world. Now, on average, men spend double the amount of money on Valentine's Day gifts than women spend. And the average amount a man spends is $130. And maybe the reason for that is because in the United States, 64% of men do not make plans in advance for a romantic Valentine's Day with their sweethearts. What do you all think of that? Well, we're gonna move along right now to the table topic section of our meeting. So please, please, please welcome Dr. Sunny Fridge, the birthday girl and our table topics master for tonight. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster of the day and happy Valentine's Day to you. I don't have an infatuation with everyone, but I certainly do want to send you love. Good evening, Toastmasters and esteemed guests. Tonight, we're going to gather in the spirit of Valentine's Day. Now, it's a time dedicated to celebrating love and cherished connections, but beyond the flowers and chocolate, 
This day embodies the essence of affection. It reminds us to express gratitude and warmth to those who hold significance in our lives. And love is a universal language. And as we begin our table topic session, let us explore the multifaceted nature of love, share our experiences and revel in the joy that brings love to our lives. I'll be looking for Toastmasters with small roles and then Toastmasters with no roles and then a guest or two. So here we go. What's the most memorable Valentine's Day gift that you've ever received or given? Chat monitor. Chat monitor, where are you? Raise your hand. Um, ah, Toastmaster Andy Byrne. What's the most memorable Valentine's Day gift you've ever received or given? I gave during Valentine's Day and birthday a combined gift to my wife, a computer and a car. She had Ooh. been speaking about both of those things and that's what happened during that time period, the birthday and Valentine's Day. So she got a car and she got a brand new Apple computer, uh, Apple Air, a Mac Air. And she was excited about it. What she was less excited about was sitting down with me and learning how to use a computer. But uh, that's another story. I think that uh, the timer's, is that timer going? Can't tell. Any event, my recollection of that being the most memorable Valentine's Day that I've had with my wife uh, stands out. Back to you. Awesome. Thank you so, oopsie, thank you so much for sharing your Valentine's memorable gift that you've given. I love that. You're talking my type of love language. What's your favorite love song and why does it hold a special place in your heart? Toastmaster David Carr, do you have time to answer that question? What's your favorite love song and why does it hold a special place in your heart? I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think all you need to is love is not it because because I think you you learn over time that love is not all you need uh, particularly particularly for marriage uh, counting on romantic love to carry you through over many years is um, a, a little bit of a, a misdirection uh, you know marriage is more of an endurance test uh, you 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 do have to. Uh, I do remember the the minister instructing me that that someday you're going to come home and you're going to trip over the garbage that your wife has left in the doorway because you were supposed to take it out and you forgot, and uh, so that's how that's how he he prepared me for for the reality of uh, trying to maintain love, trying to maintain a relationship over a long period of time, but. You know, that's not the point of a love song. The point of a love song is to make you dream and believe. The one that comes to mind, and probably it's just um, because I've heard it recently uh, on on a radio station, was um, any song from John Denver. Uh, you you fill up my senses. I, I am not going to attempt to to um, sing it for you, but <laughs> but it but it, it is um, it's just sweet. It's you are everything to me, um, and uh, you know let's let's do it again. Let's keep it going, uh, and that's a that's a great sentiment for Valentine's Day or for all year round. I'm topics master. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. 
And I, I, for me, any song by Luther Vandross is pretty cool. That's a nice love song for me. Next question. Do you believe that love can conquer all obstacles? Why or why not? Madam Watcher, do you believe that love can conquer all obstacles? Why or why not? Toastmaster Angela. Madam Table Topics Master, I do believe that true love will conquer everything. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think most of us know what true love is. Mm -hmm. I think most of us have conditional love. I love you until. I love you because. I love you today, but I may not even like you tomorrow. In fact, many of us use that word so casually before the end of this meeting. Some of you may not be in love, even though you promised <laughs> that you would be. So I do believe that true love will conquer all. The thing that I think is really important for us all to remember is that love is patient and kind and thoughtful and generous. Love thinks more highly of others than it does itself. Now, I can't speak about the rest of the world, but here in the United States of America, we think of ourselves more than anybody else, generally speaking. And therefore here, I'm not sure we experience a lot of true love. Now, if you are one of the people who happens to have the real true love, I want to say congratulations to you <laughs> and many, many more days, weeks, or years until it evaporates. But I hope not. Back over to you, Sonny. Wow. I love the way you talk about love. Thank you so much, Angela. Now, if you could write a love letter to anyone dead or alive, who would it be? And what would you say? Our guest, Ruth Ellen Denqua. If you could write a love letter to anyone living or dead, who would it be? And what would you say? <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, Tabletop It's Master, what a question. Massive question. I want to say something profound, but honestly, I'd write a love letter to myself. Oh. I think we don't love ourselves enough. And I think we all should be able to say we've written ourselves a love letter and be able to really appreciate ourselves, love ourselves so that we can love on others more easily. It's hard to admit that you don't actually have that feeling for yourself, right? Wow. We can all, we can all appreciate that. So if we take today to actually write ourselves a love letter, talking about how, what we love about each, uh, each other, but also what we love about ourselves, I think that's going to help us to really celebrate Valentine's Day the way it should be celebrated from an authentic place, from a consistent place, and from a place that comes from overflow rather than lack. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. I'm feeling the love here tonight, folks. This is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing, not just the love letter to yourself. We can all use that love letter, as you just said. Now, do I have any book lovers or movie lovers in the house by a show of hands? Do I have any book lovers, digital hands or otherwise? Anybody else? Okay. Well, I saw our eye counter raise her hand, guest Treka Savato. Let's see. What's your favorite romantic movie or book? And what lessons about love have you taken away from it? What's your favorite romantic movie or book? And what lessons about love have you taken away from it? Madam Toastmaster, my favorite movie about love is Pride and Prejudice, the Colin Firth version. <laughs> <laughs> 
And what I take away from that is how easy it is to misunderstand people. And are we showing our best to the people that are around us or are we prejudging them and not giving them an opportunity to express themselves? Did we walk into the room thinking we already knew what they were all about and ha and and at the end of the day, you really have no idea. And so the question is, do we give people the time and the consideration to be able to find out who they really are all about? And so the Mr. Darcy role, he mm -hmm. ends up softening. Actually, our two main protagonists end up softening to each other. And by the end of the movie, spoiler alert, they get married. And But they were feuding the most of the movie, like com conflicted at, at a really high level. And I love the fact that they could both soften and see each other in a new light and even overcome some of the challenges and the biases that they had culturally regarding families and regarding their status in life. And so I think those are good lessons that we can carry forward today. Madam Toastmaster, back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for your answer. And boy, I have to go and watch that, that movie. Thank you. <laughs> Um, let's see, Madam Toastmaster, how are we doing on time? Good. Okay, I do not see any other guest. I'm going to ask another question. How do you how do you define love in your own words? G. E. Caroline Ramirez, how do you define love in your own words? Oh, well, thank you for that question, it's very difficult. How do I define love in my own words? I think that love, it's a very strong feeling that makes us very good in our lives because it's like a life in our, in our life. Uh, because I, I'm thinking in love for our family, for your children, or your husband, or your boyfriend, or whatever. And I think that it's something very necessary that make us uh, humans. No, 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 I, I'm not sure about that because animals, animals feel love as well. And you feel love uh, for animals as well. I think that love is a feeling that makes us happy, that makes a better world, that inspires us to cure each other. And it's a feeling that makes us to think about another person or a, another living being that is not you. Sometimes you, because you love, you have to love yourself as well. I'm not sure it's difficult. I think after this question, I'm going to look for the definition in the dictionary. Mm. <laughs> but I would say that it's a feeling that make us happy and make the world a better world. Back to you, Sally. Awesome, awesome. Love, yes. And the right kind of love. Yes, not just the infatuation type of love. I'll ask... Maybe one more question. Let's see. Hmm. Madam Toastmaster of the day, even though you have a big bowl, share a Valentine's Day tradition you have with your friends or family. Share a Valentine's Day tradition you have with your friends or family. Well, my husband and I always go out and do like a nice dinner and things like that. So that's just a, a normal standard one. But I do like to host my grandchildren for a Valentine's Day dinner where we make pizzas, little heart-shaped pizzas, and we give them like, they're not really wine glasses, but I have these fancier goblets. They're kind of heavy duty. So if they drop them, it's not a big deal. And, you know, we get the heart napkins and, you know, I have these little balloons that are waiting here for them when they come. But I do like, I did it with my children when they were young and, uh, 
I'm a little bit crazy with the holidays, all of them really, not just Valentine's Day. And since we've moved to Florida, uh, when we moved to Delaware, we got rid of all like the tacky, crazy kind of holiday decorations. Mm -hmm. And we were tasteful when we lived in Delaware. But mm -hmm. now that we live in Florida and the little grandkids are coming over, we're back to tacky. We have everything in the house. So I love it and they love it too. They like to help me decorate. And I just feel like all the holidays, but especially Valentine's Day, it's a day where we kind of bond together and feel the love within our family. Back to you, Sonny. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, I've been listening to everyone. For me, a Hallmark movie is so good for me. I just love Hallmark movies any time of the year. I'm just such a, not a sucker, but I just love a good, happy, romantic ending. So I love that as well. And I love Angela Heath saying unbiblically what love is. So we all have something to share when it comes to love. Put a little love in your heart. Okay. And this world will be a better place. Thank you all for a wonderful and loving table topic session. Back to you, Toastmaster of the Day. And thank you, Dr. Sunny, for such a wonderfully themed and thoughtful table topic session. I loved it. <laughs> now, I was going to give you a few more facts, but instead, I'm going to give you a couple of quotes that were inspired by some of the people who spoke. When Angela was speaking, one of my favorite quotes, and I don't know who said it, but it's in love, each believes that they are the lucky one. And I think that is just beautiful. And I know I feel very lucky. Um, and, you know, I think that's a wonderful way to feel. And then Ruth Allen talking about self-love. One of, uh, at the Y that I belong to, one of the exercise instructors said, exercise not because you hate your body but because you love yourself and I thought that was pretty darn amazing so just thought I'd share those two with you before we get on to the all-important evaluation portion of our meeting. Today leading the evaluation portion of the meeting will be Carolina Ramirez. Please put your hands together and welcome Carolina and let her feel the love now. Thank you very much, Marianne. In this section, everyone will be participating. I hope you took notes during our guest speak, speech. The first evaluator is David Carr, and he will be evaluating Kutika speech. Kutika's speech. Thank you, general evaluator. Uh, fellow Toastmasters, great to have some guests here today. Uh, and especially Krithika. Uh, Krithika, one, one of the things that I get stuck on, uh, every time I see somebody give a presentation that includes slides, my first question is, why are you showing me slides? Are, are, the, are the slides going to help co convey the, the message? Now, this is a club that's devoted to online presentations, and online presentations often mean slides. Uh, and so, if the if the answer is just that you wanted to get you know experience or practice with that uh that's fine something i'm a, a little bit of a broken record on is i i suggest not necessarily having slides displayed for your entire presentation particularly for an icebreaker because an icebreaker is is really supposed to be here i am i'm establishing a person to person connection with you, my audience. And I would suggest leaving the slides uh, not shown, leaving yourself front and center uh, in the camera, looking into the camera, at least for a few seconds before you started, because the first slide that stayed up there for there quite a while was just a title slide. And you know why do we need to be looking at that when we could be looking at your lovely face? So, um you know, just just consider that i mean it, it, it and practice maybe sharing in the middle of your presentation or, or a few seconds into your presentation rather than the entire time and i i also um i'm not sure that did, did the slides amplify the uh the message because they they were largely 
sort of abstract images with a few words on them. Some of them had images or photographs that might have been family images, but I, I didn't I didn't know that whether they were family photographs, something that that was supposed to give us a sense of what kind of person you were. Uh, I didn't necessarily get that along the way. I, 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 some of the things that I did like were you had this series, this was on the slides, uh, but it was also something that you said, which was power of adaptability, oh, I'm sorry, person of adaptability, person of admirability, and I don't remember what the third one was, but it, you know, parallel structure can be something that helps to build engagement also. Authenticity. Okay. All right. Thank you, Andy. Um, uh, but I I do struggle with understanding uh, the accent sometimes, and that may be on me. But I but I was concentrating, trying to listen carefully, and maybe because of that, you need to repeat some points or drive them home a little bit more if you're speaking to a US audience. Uh, I think there was an important point where you talked about something uh, where you sacrificed a career opportunity. And I think the point of the story was it was because you weren't confident in your communication skills. And so you didn't take the job or you didn't take the opportunity but it kind of slipped by me and I wasn't quite sure I understood it. So again, that may be more of a reflection on me than it is on you, uh, but just something to be aware of uh, communicating uh, with this particular audience. I'm pretty sure I've run over time. Uh, and I that will is actually stop. true, fear of public speaking. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, but uh, you're, you know, you're a valued member of this club, and you, you keep working on it. And as as Marianne said, uh, you you know you're 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 making progress, and, and hopefully, this is paying professional dividends for you as well. General evaluator. Thank you very much, David. Very useful suggestions for our speaker. The second evaluator is Mr. Jim Barber. He will be evaluating. By the, his speech. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator, my fellow Toastmasters. By Dehi, thank you so much for coming and presenting your speech to us this evening. It's a trite expression to say that this is a contest winner. This is a winning presentation. It's also rather obvious because you've made it to division. Congratulations, this is obviously a winning presentation. But you demonstrated that this evening. This is a winning presentation. This was very, very good. The things that I liked about your presentation are too numerous to mention, but I'll run through a quick list of them. The biggest thing are your gestures and your facial expressions. You communicate as much visually as you do through the words that you use. And that is a rare skill, perhaps even a rare gift that many people don't have. And you do. You, you're almost like a mime when you, you are so expressive with your, with your hands and your gestures. That is wonderful. And I think this is going to be a big part of this being a winning presentation. Your, your vocabulary, your pacing, your, your speed of presentation, everything. You changed your volume, your vocal variety in general. Everything worked well. That was very, very good. However, you want to make this not just great, but greater than hopefully everybody else. And my only suggestions deal with being video. I asked you if this was going to be an on-camera presentation or an on-platform presentation. If this were an on-platform presentation, frankly, I wouldn't have any suggestions for you. On video, however, a couple of little things, and they all kind of were in the same general area. You were a little bit low in the frame. Now, it doesn't show up in this particular picture, but in the for most of the presentation, you were lower than you needed to be. 
and it would be better to be either closer to the camera like you were here, look here, or to uh, adjust your camera a little bit so that your head was closer to the top of the frame because so much of the video frame was wasted above you and off to the sides. And so I would like you to be a little closer and a little higher in the frame. Also, you move back and forth when you're on video. And that's a very powerful thing to do. I liked it when you here you were getting our attention. You were getting into our in our face. And so you moved closer to the frame. And I liked that. However, the downside is that when you move away from the camera, you vanish. And that I would like to see you not do so much. Instead, try to stay closer to the camera like this so that we can see you. We can establish a great rapport with you. Everything works. But this, again, this is a great presentation. I'm looking forward to seeing what the round robin people are going to take. But I think you have got a winner here, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you very much, Jim. Even though it was a high quality presentation, you gave her a homework. Are you ready for, are you ready to give an evaluation to by the by the his speech? Yes, Angela, in one minute, please, your evaluation. Excellent, I loved it, but that's not gonna help you prepare for the contest. So this is a really, and it may not have impacted everybody, but your nail polish. Your nail polish was distracting. Anybody get that? I saw one, uh-huh. But it was distracting to me. Think about it. I would put more neutral nail polish on. Um, the other thing is I would look at this video and look at the gestures. I loved most of them, but I thought there might have been a little too many gestures. They might have been just too often. So when you look at this video, see if there are some places where you may want to quiet down the gestures just a little bit. But I loved it. Two little silly things, the fingernails. I'm telling you, people are distracted by smaller things than that. So think about it and look at the video and see if you see what I saw. And back over to you. Thank you very much, Angela. Sunny, your turn. One minute. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. By Dehi. I would just like to say I enjoyed your speech. One thing that I would ask you to look at as well is you did this a couple of times, which is much more friendlier, but you did this a couple of times. And sometimes that can be making an audience defensive. So I, I might have to even look at your speech again to see if it mattered, but that's what I've been told whenever I have done that. So I'd like to share that with you. And overall, what I enjoyed was, again, when you came in our face, I did enjoy that. And <laughs> one thing that you did is actually you acted as if the audience was here and here and here. I've never tried that. Very nice. Well done. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you very much, Sunny. David, your turn. Yeah, I had two things. Actually, one, one of them builds on what Angela said about maybe, maybe the gestures were almost too much. The The one that struck uh, struck me was you did something about in my heart or my love or something like that. And you did this, this shape that almost, it, it reminded me of, and, and I'm, I'm not trying to be insulting, but, but, you know, in kindergarten where they, they teach them a song and everybody has a little gesture to go with every, you know, it's, it's to help them remember the words. Um, so maybe that that's, but but I, but that may have been the only one that made me think, gee, is she overdoing this? <laughs> the, the other thing um, that I would look at, and I'm not a lighting technician, I don't know uh, why this happens, but it might be the color of the paint in your room, the quality of the lighting. Uh, it's, at some point, your skin color was looking a little green to me. Mm -hmm. it, it could also be you know, maybe Zoom is racially biased against uh, uh, anybody other than Caucasians. That's that's quite possible too. But but I, I think possibly if you if you sort of practice in the room, 
If you have a different setting you can use, maybe with a, a planar background, uh, just to avoid that kind of kind of highlight. Uh, it's it's something that that I noticed and did distract me for a few seconds. So you know, if you if you have the power of being able to set up in your own home space, try and find a space where you won't have that issue. Maybe. Thank you very much, David. Andy, your turn. Thank you very much. I enjoyed your speech very much. It was certainly well practiced. The things that I would point out in terms of what I might focus on, you had great vocal dynamics, you had great gestures. The thing I might concentrate a little bit on as you're looking at your speech and taking out that surgical knife and, and cutting additional words out is your message. Now you had a clear message, but it was repeated and clouded with a whole bunch of other verbiage. So you were talking about body image and you mentioned a few different times. You didn't mention it in terms of bullying, which is where we see it most on television where girls have body image issues and they're bullied like in the Mean Girls thing reference that you gave. But you want to make your message very, very clear. And to me, you're having lots of different ideas. So I was saying, what is her main message to me from the speech? And I think to clarify that would elevate your speech even more. Thank you, Andy. Teresa, your turn. Thank you. One of the things that, well, of course, her speech is fabulous. I agree with the hand gestures. I, I thought they were overused to the point where it felt very theatric, you know, and, and I, and like you're playing to an audience that's deaf almost that still needs to understand where you're going with the topic. Um, so I would encourage you to watch the video with the sound off and see what you notice there. Also, the comment about the placement of the camera in the beginning, especially, we're like looking up your nose quite a bit. And so um, you decide if that's a that's an aspect that's useful to you or not. And to Andrew's point, I appreciate the idea of like, can you even make it a little bit more concise about what the issue is? And then I was also curious to think about where did you find that self-love? It, it just comes out of nowhere. Like it, it doesn't feel like it's supported by examples in a way that made me feel like there's a redemptive kind of quality about that. So I was looking for the Rocky moment <laughs> and how you got there as opposed to like, it just happened overnight, you know, or it happens as a progression, but I don't know what you did in order to get there. So was it, was it authentic? I'm not questioning the authenticity of it. I just, I want to know how, right? Therapy, did you, you know, work on your brain? Did you find something else to love about yourself and decide that like looks isn't, isn't a priority? You know, how did you get to that point? Thank you very much, Teresa, for your feedback. Pritika, your turn. Thank you, Toastmaster Carolina. So I'm not a... I mean, I'm still an amateur to comment on a contestant, though I will take my chance to like retrospect what I learned. So from your speech, I, I really enjoyed your speech. It was awesome. There is no doubt about it. As I also uh, have to say, like your gestures were slightly distracting the message that you wanted to deliver. When you were speaking about this uh, Cinderella, the girl, and also when you wanted to change yourself to girls who are really who really get affected out of some other things. There was like your hand gestures and the body language was not quite uh, comfortable and it wasn't reflecting what you wanted to say. It was completely deviating and it was completely distracting from the message that you were delivering. Your tone and voice note was perfect. I do not have any comments about it. Your modulation was going well. Though the action and your gestures might tune might needs to be may, needs to be tuned so that it reflects the message that you wanted to deliver perfectly. 
And that is all I have for you. Thank you. Over to you, Carolina. Thank you very much, Kritika. Ruth Ann, would you like to give an evaluation? Yes, Your please. Turn. Okay, thank you. So did you hear the vocal variety? Did you notice the facial expressions? Did you align with the message on colorism? I did, and it helped me imagine I was there with Valid Valika. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. What could be a challenge to you to make it even better and bigger to the audience? Well, the opening. Have you heard of the ugly duckling? I'm about to share with you a well-known story about the ugly duckling, my journey to being a swan. And it's not what you think. And three ways you can do the same. Just an example. You see, pausing on points you want the audience to engage with, asking them to nod or raise their hands would help us on the online forum definitely feel much more engaged. Using the power of free, demeaning, demoralizing, I know that you use two, but destructive. We remember in freeze, right? And so I think that would be even more powerful as well. What I really love though is your storytelling, the pace, the poise, and the passion in your message. Amazing. You've got it. You've you literally had this mic drop at the end, and I was like here with you, like cheering you on, wanting you to win. And so take my suggestions as just suggestions. Take just like dinner, eat what you can and just take it, leave what you don't want. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruth. Johnny, your turn. This time here. You know, going after that evaluation, I'm going to feel very, <laughs> Ellen, wow, wow, wow. But just to say, I did comment on this already, but this is where my expertise comes in because I also fidget. The reason your gestures seem too much is that you actually have a physical crutch. And this, and this is it. You go to it as your go-to for everything even when it's not needed. For example, when you were saying think, you didn't go think, you went. And because it's repeating this gesture over and over again, that's why it looks like you're gesturing too much because that's your physical awe. Ah. So if you take, whenever you have the feeling that you want to do this or this, put them behind your back or put it beside you, you reduce your gestures quite a lot. Mine is this, this is mine or the open. So it's more, we're inviting you in. That's what it means. But when you do it too much, it physically sounds like, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. But you're doing that physically. And that's why people don't understand why it seems so overwhelming. That's what we're doing. Learn that the hard way. Hope that helps. The vocal variety as hoping to hear the other people, even if just a little I don't want everybody to sound like you in your speech, but it's awesome. Loved it. Great movement. Physical, like wonderful. I like the going forward, the coming back, the moving around. Get rid of that physical ah. Uh, add some vocal variety. Awesome. Excellent speech. Thank you very much, Tony. Marianne, your turn. Well, poor my day, he listens to my feedback every time we talk. But with that said, I did notice something that I don't usually notice is when you did demoralizing and demeaning, your hands went out of screen. So what they were saying is that you're a little bit low. Uh, tonight, that was the case. It is not always the case, though. And uh, back to you, Carolina. Thank you very much, Marianne. Yeah, uh, I just yes. want to, oh yeah, okay. I just want to uh, kind of uh, convey, you know, that um, when I gave my speech for the area level, I had set it up in, in the other room, which had a background and everything, even the height and everything set up. And today I had to change it at the last moment. So, you know, I it was very hard for me to move everything within the, you know, just five minutes before and then set everything up because... Generally, when you are prepared for a speech, uh, you know, everything has to be set up and done in advance. And today I really did not have, I had to rush last minute into another room and I didn't get the room, which I usually have been practicing for such a long time. So Well, well no worries. Uh, you have three weeks to get it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, no, it can I, be a little um, challenging when you have to, because you're practicing so long in a particular setup with everything is just right. 
And then suddenly, if you have to kind of jump to a totally different change, it does make a difference to the way you kind of, you know, uh, but hey, I do. I just wanted to kind of convey uh, Vaidehi, that. Yeah. Vaidehi, yeah. did you have any questions for any of the evaluators? Anything that um, you heard that you might have more questions on? No, I don't think so. Because, you know, uh, one good thing is that they were very honest. They were very upfront. And what I realized when I listened to everyone is that everyone's intentions were to just help me, uh, you know, get better and improve wherever they noticed that things were not, you know, going out of camera or maybe it was too much, too little. I think all these things I'm going to kind of write down and try to remember and improvise. I really appreciate you guys you know really taking the time to notice every small detail because details matter and I really thank you so much for your uh, feedback thank you very much for your respectful feedback and I was going to say something about your background maybe look for another background without a door but it, but this is something about it but it was a great message. You had a great energy, great eye contact, vocal variety, and you are a very advanced speaker. Congratulations. And thank you for presenting your speech in our club. And let's let's continue with evaluations. Our accounter, Teresa, your report, please. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. Just one moment. Okay, so we have uh, today was great for uh, minimizing the uhs and the ums, but uh, David, I caught you a couple times. Karithka and Mary Ann, and I'm sure I had 20. So <laughs> something that I'm working on. So thank you so much, everybody. Great job tonight. Thank you, Teresa. Next, our watcher, Angela Heath. Angela, are you there? No, I think she's frozen. Frozen. Uh, chat monitor, Andy Byrne. How are you all? The chat monitor function was to look at the chat and see what people put in there. Uh, David was very helpful in putting in guides to getting to the overall listing of the meeting agenda uh i put in the book from amazon called the five love languages the secret to love that lasts by gary chapman and there were some other very important points that were listed a lot of congratulations and positive feedback for our guest speaker and of course our timer put down all the times for are individuals for the table topics and overall we did a good job we did include the word uh glossophobia which is fear of public speaking oh. and that's to add to your knowledge oh thank you andy grammarian david car your report please my report is that uh, I am an absolutely terrible grammarian. Uh, I, I, I forget all about it. Uh, and I forgot about it until a couple of minutes ago when I realized I'm going to have to get a grammarian's report and I really haven't been listening that carefully. So I, I apologize. I, I throw myself on your mercy. <laughs> Thank you, David. I want to, Angela Heath. Please, Angela, your report. Okay, so I was watching all kinds of things. David Byrne, I wanted a piece of whatever you were eating. And I saw that Sunny gets my award for the perfect background. Right now, you are perfect. Oh. Love it, love it, love it. Carolina and Marianne. Um, you guys get an award for changing your wardrobe. <laughs> I, I really like how you change your clothes in the middle. <laughs> and um, Marianne, right now you look fabulous. But before you looked very short. You looked very <laughs> short. <laughs> and I'm going to give myself the poor lighting award. I can't do much about it because I'm actually in corporate <laughs> suites. And I've tried everything. I don't have much choice until I move to my next abode. But 
We all looked fabulous and everybody said, happy Valentine's Day. So love, love, love. Back to you. Thank you, Angela. And thank you for our timer, Joni. I noticed that David is not qualified for, for being the best evaluator. Be careful with the time management. This is a very important skill for leaders. And this was a very good meeting. Thank you for, for by the by the his speech. It was great to have a guest here presenting us uh, a high quality speech. And it was a very good time. And I'm going to announce the winners. The best tab table topic speaker is our guest, our guest Ruth Ellen. Congratulations, Ruth. Best evaluator, Jim Barber. <laughs> and the best speaker today was by his Sydney's. Congratulations. Back to you, Miss Toastmaster. Marianne. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for all of the contributors in the evaluation portion and especially to Carolina. Closing with just a couple more facts. The heart is associated with Valentine's Day as it is considered the source of all human emotions. The name Valentine is derived from the Latin word meaning valor. And California produces 60% of American roses, but the vast number sold on Valentine's Day in the United States are imported mostly from South America. Approximately 110 million roses, the Gosh. majority red, will be sold and delivered within a three-day time period. So with that, I am going to end my portion of the meeting and wish you all lots of love and a very happy Valentine's Day. Back to you, David Carr. Thank you very much, Marianne, for leading a fabulous, lovely meeting, actually. You're back with David, David, you're muted. David. David. How about now? Do you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Before we ask quickly for people to fill in roles for, for next meeting, let me ask for feedback from our guests. Why don't we why don't we start with our guest speaker? Uh, I don't I don't think have you visited with us before? No. Uh, any any impressions of the club? Uh, what what we can do better? I think you know very welcoming, warm club because I did not feel that I'm uh, like be, attending a meeting for the first time. Uh, I just felt like this was just another Princeton Toastmasters family. So <laughs> I really, I mean, it it really takes a lot of um, you know to be very honest to even give feedback to a completely new uh, member who uh, a speaker who comes as a guest. So I felt at home. I mean, to be very honest, and everybody's very. Uh, lively and exuberant and very knowledgeable and uh, I really uh, I think it's a very a very vibrant group of people <laughs> so I okay. really enjoy this meeting. Good. Glad we were <laughs> behaving ourselves this week. <laughs> um, uh, Trika, you, you you visited with us uh, a few times now. Um, any any uh, anything new that you noticed this time? Well, I missed the tech tip. Sunny did such a good, Dr. Sunny did such a good job the last time I was here. I was like, oh, oh. what's that going to be like next time? <laughs> um, yeah. So I just really enjoy this group a lot. Joni, her yeah. energy is just off the charts. And yeah. that was so beautiful. Marianne, I really enjoyed uh, your moderation today. It was so beautiful. <laughs> and, you know, hearing the feedback, it was just really that's what I was looking for is like tougher feedback and more uh, you know honest um feedback and it was really beautiful to hear from everybody else so thank you so much I really enjoy this group a lot terrific and Ruth Ellen are, are you a member now or I you, know you, right oh, yes. 
Yeah, I joined two weeks ago online. So, oh, okay. yeah. All right. I, I apologize. I, sh I should know these things. I'm supposed to know these things. Mm -hmm. Well, that means yeah. we can sign you up for a role next week. Uh, do, do, yeah, do you want to? Absolutely. Are you ready to ready? speak? I'm ready to speak. All Ooh. right. Well, let's push you down for a speech next week. <laughs> do, you, do you think you can do that? And um, yeah. Uh, if you if you've got you know start to get familiar with the website, there is a place to put in your your path and your project. But for right now, let's see, I think we actually don't. We might not actually have you uh, in the system. Did you receive something saying how to set your password and all that? No, not yet. Just okay. just on the general Toastmasters right. website. All right. Well, I will. Uh, I'll I'll put you on the I can put you on the agenda anyways, but it's just not. Thank you. Have to get some of that that paperwork kind of stuff straightened out. So, um, and we do have a test master for next week. Uh, Andre had had signed up in advance for that. Uh, Kritika, I have you down as both timer uh, and grammarian. Um, and we do want to build up the membership in the club so we don't all have to take two or three roles. But <laughs> that's that's something that we we need to work on. Uh, anybody else want to speak next week or um, volunteers for evaluator? I, I could speak. Okay, Dr. Byrne. So two speakers, that's pretty good. Uh, Carolina, you're in as topics master already? Uh, she she left. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I, can be master already, so. I can be evaluator. Great. 